Good day, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you for your time. We really Thanks appreciate it. Yes, and given that we are living in COVID-19 period, we have the opportunity, we don't have opportunity to have the uh, direct uh, communication, but we are using the online platforms to receive important information and to provide info, important information for our viewers. Thank you again. Thank you for the invitation. It is a great pleasure for me as the head of EU Monitoring Commission to meet you and uh, to also be able to speak to the viewers uh, of um, Talk TV channel. Thank you. The main topic uh, we are going to discuss today is the closure of the Anguri Bridge and uh, humanitarian impact it has made on locals on the both sides of the ABL. The first question will be what is the impact of the decision made in March, the closure of the Nguri Bridge. Uh, the official version of this decision was preventing spread of COVID-19 and as we know the bridge is already uh, reopened but under the specific uh, rules. Yes, uh, we uh, monitor very closely the situation related to the freedom of movement as the only international monitoring presence uh, uh, here in Georgia on the ground. We uh, are able to closely follow the impact of the prolonged closure of uh, so-called uh, controlled crossing points that used to um, facilitate the movement uh, across uh, administrative boundary lines both on the Abkhaz and South Ossetian segment of uh, those lines. And uh, in case of the Nguri Bridge, uh, we uh, follow also very closely and uh, with great uh, attention the uh, humanitarian impact uh, of the uh, lack of uh, free movement uh, across uh, uh, Nguri River uh, for the local population, local communities uh, living actually on both sides of the ABL because uh, this situation is uh, affecting uh, people that uh, used to have uh, pretty intensive uh, contacts, um, interactions in the past uh, in many fields like people-to-people -people contacts, uh, family relationships, uh, uh, from the point of view of access to education, uh, economic relations. Uh, so uh, we uh, are trying to assess uh, also uh, how this uh, situation is uh, 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 um, kind of affecting the living standards, uh, in particular of the uh, ethnic Georgian uh, population living in uh, Gali district because of their very specific conditions and uh, specific situation. So uh, what we can uh, say with uh, uh, a certain uh, uh, level of uh, uh, certainty, maturity uh, after uh, observing this kind of situation during uh, COVID pandemic is that uh, uh, the uh, situation with uh, COVID-19 even uh, further um, uh, 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 kind of uh, increased the um, uh, pressure and uh, worsened the uh, conditions. Uh, so uh, we received uh, uh, credible reports uh, about the shortages uh, of uh, medicines uh, or even uh, shortages uh, of uh, some uh, uh, food products um, across ABL. So this is uh, definitely a matter of uh, serious concern. We must be also aware that uh, significant uh, 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 part of the local population living uh, in Gali district uh, uh, is relying on the uh, financial resources uh, Name, mainly pensions uh, uh, that they used to collect uh, uh, on uh, 
the other side of the ABN. And because of this uh, closure of uh, Anguri Bridge, they were for many months uh, deprived uh, of the access uh, to those financial resources, giving that quite complicated uh, economic uh, situation uh, on the, in, in Abkhazia. So uh, this is uh, additional kind of uh, element of this uh, difficult, already difficult situation. Thank you very much for the very um, detailed answer. And uh, as we know, during this period when the bridge was closed, uh, the Gali IPRM format has been uh, suspended for a while as well. So what are the results of it? Uh, unfortunately, uh, Gali IPRM uh, had been suspended for a while, even longer than the closure of the Nguri Bridge. Uh, we are, as uh, EUMM, uh, uh, one of the uh, participants uh, of this uh, format. Uh, we also chair or co-facilitate another similar format related to South Ossetian theater, so-called Ergneti IPRM, that uh, we managed to restart after almost uh, one year uh, of break uh, this summer. So uh, we hope that uh, the same, uh, so to say, solution uh, could be found uh, in case of uh, Gali IPRM because uh, uh, it goes without saying that uh, such direct uh, dialogue, especially uh, focused on the resolution of uh, practical daily problems existing uh, at the ABL uh, problems uh, of cross ABL character. Uh, this is uh, very useful instrument uh, that is contributing uh, actually to the prevention of potential incidents. This is the right forum actually to tackle the uh, daily problems of the conflict affected uh, communities. Uh, this is also the uh, good uh, confidence uh, building measure that uh, is uh, building this necessary level of uh, mutual trust. So uh, uh, we follow closely the development uh, regarding the uh, Gali IPRM. United Nations uh, is in charge uh, of uh, this format uh, um, in the exact right now because of the COVID pandemic we don't have regular meetings uh, in Geneva in the framework of Geneva international discussions so those two formats of uh, IPRM, incident prevention and resolution mechanisms are available and uh, they can be used in order to facilitate this kind of uh, direct uh, dialogue. Uh, let me also mention that uh, we are, as uh, European Union monitoring mission, we operate also another important uh, practical instrument of confidence building, namely the hotline that uh, is uh, the main uh, channel of communication across uh, ABL. And uh, this year, uh, because of the pandemic, but not only uh, because of this, we see the uh, rapid increase of uh, uh, activations of both sides on both sides of this uh, hotline. Uh, with regard to the Abhas uh, theater, uh, right now the majority, huge majority of those activations are related to medical crossings uh, across uh, Anguri Bridge. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a very important uh, tool uh, during uh, this uh, very difficult phase of the COVID-19 pandemic. So this uh, hotline is uh, available 24 hours, seven days per week. Uh, and uh, we managed to help uh, many patients uh, seeking uh, emergency, non-emergency medical care uh, on uh, this side of the ABL. Uh, in, in uh, uh, hospitals, uh, in other uh, facilities. So this is 
practical contribution, I think, to the uh, resolution of the problems with access to medical care uh, for the population living uh, uh, on the Abkhaz side of the ABL. In the mandate of UMM, we read that the one main goal is to facilitate the resumption of a safe and normal life for the local communities living on both sides of the administrative boundary lines, ABL, with Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Uh, the question is how available is this goal under these specific circumstances? And you partially have provided already answer, but I would like to go a little bit deeper to answer this question. This is a very uh, important aspect of uh, our mandate, uh, normalization, uh, especially with regard to the living conditions of the conflict affected uh, population. And uh, I will be very frank, uh, uh, we don't uh, see significant progress uh, in uh, this direction, unfortunately. And uh, this uh, uh, current situation related to the COVID pandemic uh, is not very conducive, it's not contributing to the uh, progress uh, in uh, this direction. So uh, what we see is uh, to a certain extent uh, uh, growing um, actually uh, isolation, separation. Uh, we see continuous uh, uh, activities related to something that we call borderization. So the construction of the uh, infrastructure along the ABL that is uh, preventing actually local population from crossing uh, uh, this line. We see also uh, a growing presence of uh, security actors uh, at the ABL that is again creating a kind of uh, atmosphere of uh, intimidation um, that uh, uh, is uh, uh, scaring actually local population and is affecting their sense of uh, security as well. Uh, we see uh, continuous detentions uh, under the pretext of uh, uh, so-called illegal crossing. Uh, this is uh, uh, another issue that uh, we follow uh, very closely and uh, this uh, is definitely uh, also affecting uh, more or less uh, 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 the possibility to have this kind of uh, cross uh, ABL contacts. In many cases, we are talking about uh, very um, kind of uh, uh, dramatic situations. Yes, people are trying to uh, cross uh, ABL to go to the other side because of some uh, personal issues like uh, uh, attending funerals of, of uh, family members or they are trying to visit uh, elderly people or uh, they are seeking uh, uh, emergency medical care. So uh, those are again uh, uh, humanitarian issues and uh, uh, I think uh, this is also affecting uh, significantly the mm, sense uh, of uh, uh, normality uh, uh, among uh, the local population. Let me also mention something that is uh, mainly uh, affecting the younger generation. So uh, the issue of uh, access to education, particular education in native language. So uh, kids, students uh, from Gali district who would like to attend uh, uh, schools, uh, 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 universities, uh, they are, they face uh, significant problems. Yes, uh, there is lack of predictability. They don't know when and how they will be able to cross actually. So there were uh, also some uh, problems with the uh, documents uh, that uh, are accepted as, uh, you know, uh, those that allow uh, the crossing uh, of the 
of the ABL. Uh, we, we had some issues with uh, the issuance uh, of uh, so-called de facto uh, 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 Abkhaz passports uh, uh, or some uh, propusks as uh, they are yeah. called in, in Russian. So uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, as I said, uh, uh, kind of creating a sense of uh, uh, instability, uh, a sense of unpredictability and uh, uh, even with the uh, kind of uh, temporary openings, uh, I think uh, we should uh, seek and encourage a kind of permanent solution that will take into account the interests of the conflict affected communities living along ABL. As you said, there are very dramatic cases and, for example, there has been a very loud case when the person tried to swim over the river in order to reach another border. So we are really facing very dramatic examples caused by the um, uh, closure of the um, uh, bridge. And the last question, um, uh, you are the head of the monitoring mission uh, since March. 2020 and uh, yes and as we know you have held already several meetings with the governmental officials of Georgia and you are very well aware about the details of this conflict so I would like to ask you now what are your views in order to fulfill missions goal your personal views and uh, another thing what do we have to expect uh, and are we going to expect any changes in the mission priorities in, due to the COVID-19? Yes, uh, thank you for this question. Uh, yes, uh, I can confirm that uh, we enjoy very good uh, cooperation uh, with uh, Georgian authorities, uh, both on the high political level, highest political level in the country, but also on the kind of pragmatic uh, working level with our main partners among uh, Georgian institutions. And uh, this is uh, something that we feel on a daily basis, a lot of understanding, a lot of uh, appreciation directed towards uh, our activities. So this is a very good uh, cooperative uh, atmosphere uh, uh, in which we operate and it's uh, always uh, very uh, kind of uh, creates uh, better conditions definitely for uh, our uh, uh, operations. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, the kind of short term goal right now uh, for us uh, during the pandemic uh, is to maintain our operational activities, our visible presence uh, at the uh, ABL in the in the theater. Uh, so uh, this is what uh, we tried to um, achieve during the initial phase uh, of the COVID-19 pandemic in the spring. So uh, we managed to only uh, um, lightly, slightly reduce uh, our uh, patrolling activities uh, number of uh, patrols that we conduct uh, daily. Uh, during the summer time, we went back almost to the uh, pre-pandemic uh, level of activities uh, uh, with uh, some efforts. Uh, we managed uh, also to restore um, uh, other uh, activities like uh, uh, human security patrols, for example, where we meet uh, with representatives of the civil society uh, with representatives of uh, local population. We follow some uh, uh, other aspects uh, of the situation on the ground related to uh, human security, to, to gender issues. Uh, we also resumed uh, during the summer uh, our visits uh, to the uh, units of the Ministry of Internal Affairs and uh, um, uh, contacts with the um, uh, Ministry of Defense. Uh, now we uh, witness uh, uh, the second uh, phase of the uh, COVID pandemic uh, with a uh, growing um, number of 
new cases. So we have again to adapt our uh, operational activities uh, to the changing environment. So we uh, want to protect uh, both our uh, staff members, but also our local partners. We don't uh, uh, want to create uh, ad additional or unnecessary risks. Uh, so this is a kind of uh, constant uh, process of uh, adaptation. We want to be agile. We want to be flexible uh, in order to retain those uh, uh, abilities to to conduct uh, our monitoring activities, but also to prepare reports that we produce uh, on a regular basis. Uh, and uh, those reports are the main source of information for both uh, uh, Brussels-based uh, EU institutions, but also for the capitals of the uh, EU member states. This is also part of our mandate to inform uh, EU policies uh, with regard to, to uh, Georgia, but also wider region. And here, I think we, we also see, unfortunately, um, some uh, uh, complicating uh, issues from the perspective of development, from the perspective of uh, regional security, the uh, escalation uh, that we witness uh, in and Nagorno-Karabakh um, uh, relatively close to our area of uh, uh, operations. Uh, this is an uh, additional uh, element uh, uh, of, uh, of the situation that uh, we have to take it into account. Uh, and uh, I, I uh, really hope that uh, Georgia uh, being uh, having uh, a diversified uh, uh, composition of its population with uh, uh, also uh, some minority communities, including uh, Azerbaijani and Armenian uh, communities, uh, will serve as a kind of uh, model of uh, peaceful, uh, good coexistence of. Uh, different ethnic groups. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, important to ensure this kind of uh, element of stability in uh, this uh, uh, volatile um, situation in the region. Thank you for this, uh, for this example and bringing the Nagorno-Karabakh case into our interview because as you are aware, the Georgia is settled by Azerba ethnic Azerbaijanians and ethnic Armenian minorities. And you, I'm sure you are aware that the lately uh, people from the Akhalkalaki, the Samtskhajalkheti region, have uh, participated into some activities in order to uh, show their support to Armenian, uh, uh, Armenian citizens. So this is really very sensitive for us. On this point, on this point, please allow me to uh, make uh, just a of short remark that uh, in such uh, delicate, sensitive uh, situation, it is important to be aware that uh, some external actors might use disinformation, fake news, and similar hybrid activities in order to instigate uh, some tensions or uh, in order to destabilize uh, internal situations. So uh, I think this is very important role of the media outlets like you and uh, responsible journalism, you know, to be aware of uh, such risks, but also to be able to provide objective, fact-based information, news uh, that is uh, uh, giving uh, really this uh, sense uh, of um, stability and, and is uh, uh, not, uh, so to say, um, uh, contributing to uh, certain uh, media uh, chaos that uh, might be created. So uh, I think uh, 
Uh, this is uh, yes, totally uh, agree. Uh, that very, that media very, has yes, very important yes. role in you, this process. You play a very important role, yes, yes. in the current and, political uh, context. Fortunately, we have very good examples of cooperation and collaboration of the ethnic Armenians and ethnic Azerbaijanians living in the territory of the Georgia. They are participating in the um, joint programs, uh, joint workshops. They are members of the joint uh, of them uh, NGOs all together, and they are providing really very good example of the friendship, uh, despite the ethnic uh, ethnicity. Thank you very much. It was really very interesting to hear from you and your perspective. Thank you once again for this opportunity. I really enjoyed uh, this conversation, and uh, all the best. Stay safe. You stay too. healthy.